Hey friends, welcome to the Stationery Cafe, your podcast for everything stationery, journaling, and planning related. This is April from Penguins Creative. We have Kelly from Kelly Love Letters. And Hello. then we, we also have Phyllis from Miss Link Bloom after a long time. Hi, everyone. Excited to be back. <laughs> and today is a special episode because we're at episode 100 again <laughs> because of our <laughs> Our silly. I was like, wait, one hundred again. <laughs> we did. We actually two years. No, one year ago, exactly around oh, yeah. this time, we had the hundredth episode recording. By the way, join mm-hmm. us for a drink, and let's we're talking about stationary world. Anyway, um, back to this, <laughs> that was the finishing of the intro. But we did the hundredth episode episode like a year ago but then I you know when Kelly and I took a hiatus we came back we kind of restarted I decided to merge happy hour into the regular episodes and start counting them so now we're officially up to like on Instagram episode 100 so it's like the official episode 100 rather than the unofficial one so yeah (laughs) unofficially i think we're at 187 episode now but the numbering makes sense just just look at yeah 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 let's just go with it i'll just trust you yeah (laughs) yay milestones yay (laughs) yay so i was like since it's the 100th episode let's get phyllis back on i mean we haven't seen you in a while so actually you should catch us up on what you have been up to um and the listeners Well, first, I have to preface everything with an apology because we're recording this after child bedtime. After dark. This half with the bedtime and some screaming happened. So (laughs) if you hear a little bit of noise in the background, it's okay. He's fine. (laughs) It's under control. (laughs) But no, life's been life's been all right. You know, work's been busy. Um, I think probably my biggest exciting update is that we just came back from Taiwan um, yeah. for a three week trip, and that was initially it was kind of scary because my grandmother, who is ninety three, was mm. admitted to the hospital, and we didn't oh. know what was going on. It was a little scary, but. Um, actually she's better now and she's mm-hmm. living in an assisted living facility so there's people taking care of her so my mom is a lot less stressed and worried yeah. so that's good and that all happened kind of in the first week we were there so we we ended up having to go early like unexpectedly mm-hmm. because my grandma got sick yeah because so I remember week, you were going to join me at California at the California Pet exactly, Show oh. exactly well, you know, at one point we were even thinking, well, do we want to go? You know, we were a little bit afraid of the traveling, but then all this stuff happened with my grandma. I was like, okay, well, we have to go. We're definitely going to go. And and pandemic wise, I actually felt much safer in Taiwan than I do in the States because everyone wears a mask all the time, no matter what. And so even though the rules say you don't even have to wear it outside, but people just do. And so as a result, everyone just lives life normally they just wear masks <laughs> nice. yeah yeah that's my but experience yeah. too. the first two first week was hospital-y kind of stuff and then the last two weeks were just visiting my my other grandparents and then doing fun things taking teddy out to see you know like the zoo and this new mm-hmm. oh my gosh this is crazy new aquarium that is uh, so cool it's called X Park. Mm-hmm. I, have you guys heard of it? I've, I've only heard of it. I've never been to that aquarium. I just know that oh. they have the the big sunfish thing. This is in Taiwan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, um, it's a special, it's designed by a Japanese company, and this is the first aquarium they've designed outside of Japan, I believe. Mm. And it's very um it's supposed to be very artsy and immersive and Mm. all the music from every exhibit like when you walk from room to room it's all composed by joe hisaishi from (gasps) you know who's famous for studio ghibli stuff dude what the hell i want to go there (laughs) so magical (laughs) okay so cool okay i'm going kind of like was it kind of like your aquarium in animal crossing style like yes 
Yes, <laughs> like not a ton of signs that you read about the animals. Mostly it's about just standing there and looking at the sure. fish, taking pictures. <laughs> That's so cool! Wow. And and the best part, I think my husband took a picture of this and sent it to April. But the you finish in a cafe that's all penguin themed. So we bought ah! a penguin latte with a penguin oh. chocolate bun. Cute. It was it was everything was just so journal worthy when we were there. <laughs> it was so fun. But I have of course I haven't caught up on any journal. I haven't done any journal things since I came back. <laughs> but you did some stationary shopping though, I bet. Like yes. Oh. Stationary shopping and then Actually, I think probably my favorite memory from the whole trip, aside from seeing family, was um, taking the iconic train at Alisan. So Alisan is this mountain, uh, I guess kind of in central Taiwan. And it's famous because there are these giant trees, there, giant cypress trees that are, I guess you could call them spirit trees. Mm -hmm. in English and they're huge almost like California redwood like that kind of big big tree mm. and there's an it used to be an old logging area during Japanese mm -hmm. occupation and there's a railway that kind of has like a Japanese railway kind of feel yeah, um, yeah. Like the stations are kind of built in like Japanese style and so it's this this cute adorable old red train on rickety, rickety oh. railroad tracks going yeah. through the woods with like moss and giant trees. And it's the most magical. Another thing. Animal <laughs> Crossing moment. <laughs> well, I was going to say maybe you like literally felt like you were in a Ghibli movie, especially at the aquarium yeah. too. And like, that's so cool. What I thought of was I feel like I'm on the Traveler's Train. Like if Traveler's oh. Train were a real thing, this is Traveler's Train. Oh, that's how I feel. Oh my gosh. That's All so right, cute. April, submit that to Yuri. <laughs> Let her know. <laughs> the story. <That's> the spot. <laughs> I and, love oh it. Oh my gosh. There was a tabby cat or like an orange cat sitting and sunning itself at the train station. Uh, like on no, the Oh, that's so cute. Magical I, moment right oh. there. <laughs> It's I wish so I was magical. there. <laughs> yeah, the two of you would have loved it. Aww. Yeah, group trip. When we do our group trip, yeah, we're gonna take it. We're gonna go there because Kelly has not been to Taiwan. Before. No, I haven't, and I really like. I want to be that guy and go to that area that apparently is inspired inspired the the little town and spirited away Jofen, yeah oh, the, yes. the lantern I want to go there so but April's like it's so touristy I'm like I don't care <laughs> I want to go it is very touristy but my sister will take you because she like yeah. takes all of her friends there um but I yeah take pics I want to like, <laughs> I feel like Taiwan is like the cheaper Japan you get like just as good oh. food for much more <laughs> affordable prices i like that i just can't is... speak the language though <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, I mean i guess i can't speak japanese that well but better than i can speak chinese people speak english a lot in taiwan i mean phyllis you on this trip yeah. probably even teddy was speaking english to everyone so <laughs> I know I could not get him to use Mandarin. It was very, I was like, I was thinking he would be able to practice a lot, but he still felt kind of shy about using mm. Mandarin. Although by the end of the three weeks, he was using, you know, he had his favorite words, which were all related to transportation, like for the, <laughs> like, Gautier for the high-speed rail and Dienta <laughs> for all of the electric trains. So he had his favorite words. But That's cute. That's yeah, so cool. Nice. And I just have to share probably another really fun memory was when I was at Vision Stationery, I was just shopping around. Partner and shop. I overheard. Yes, partner shop for Travelers Coming. Mm. I got their special stamp. Oh. Um, I heard I heard someone talking with the store owner asking about like, oh, nearby places to visit um, that had like hiking trails. And so I when when the woman was walking out, I said, "Oh, were you looking for um, hiking spots? Uh, because we just came from a little hiking spot." She said, "Oh no, actually, I was talking about Taizong, But are you Phyllis?" And I was like, "Wait, no what? way, no way, <laughs> what the heck?" Like, uh, yes. Do I know? I was like, "Yeah, do I know you?" She was like, 
I recognized your voice from the podcast. <laughs> oh my god. Oh what? I don't what? Wait, Taiwanese and, person listens to our podcast? She, she's actually from uh Singapore. I believe I she's from Singapore. Okay, I but still <laughs> yes, she was oh, traveling. That's she, crazy. Yes, she happened to be visiting at the exact same time I was in that stationery store. Whoa. Blew my mind. And so I was like, whoa. She's like, yeah. And then I saw the episode recording of you on YouTube. And so I thought that looks like her. And then, um, and then, oh, and so April, she was following all of your recommendations for Taiwanese <laughs> Station. So she'd been going to all the different shops that oh you were recommending. Gosh, that's so Dude, funny. That's awesome. Well, hello. Yeah. If, if you're listening, that is so cool. Yeah. I'm so happy <laughs> that you bumped it, into Phyllis. <laughs> it was, I was like, what? No way. I heard her Instagram handle is creative, like with T-I-F nomad creative so, nomad okay yes. yeah i recognize her we dm sometimes <laughs> yeah that's so awesome <laughs> the cool it was the coolest thing because i was like what i just the odds that we were both visiting taiwan both in that shop and both, both there at that exact and both speculating about each other because you were eavesdropping yeah. on her asking about the hiking <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny it's one of those moments that's like the world is so small like wow it was it was but yeah anyway I just thought like stationary community we are like connected we're like soulmates <laughs> we, we, we kind of are fate pulling us together <laughs> oh my goodness it's so that just goes to show like if you guys listen to our podcast like we've loved to know that you listen to us <laughs> like just yeah, don't, hesi course. don't hesitate to come up and say hey are you april are you kelly are you phyllis like we would love to say hi <laughs> for sure mm. our our celebrity moments i'm just kidding yeah. <laughs> that will never have it, in real life <laughs> it made me so happy we didn't get a chance to journal together we play, we tried to plan something but then she was kind of traveling to other parts of Taiwan and then I was traveling and so we just didn't meet up but mm. it was fun to see her nice so cool yeah what's going on with you all um so I just came back from a trip too I just came back from Houston so those who follow me might see me at drum goals over the weekend like the first weekend of um March to do a plotter pop-up and to be honest, that's just a facade, like for me to go on this Houston trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, let's talk about Potter, but also I'm going to eat my way through Houston. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I got to hang out with Toasty Tree, our friend, um, been I on the podcast Toasty. before, our Twitch stream friends. And she basically was just this general host. And she took me through the package that she actually showed CY and Kelly like last year <laughs> where we went to like all the iconics like I'm holding this beaver toy right now it's called <laughs> Bu Bucky's is like this gas station that's just like a Disneyland beaver it's, theme it's not just a gas station <laughs> it's a it's, it's a way of life it's a beaver Disneyland like sort of situation <laughs> and so we went to the gas station <laughs> like Elliot tagged it on on this trip actually because he's he's just like tempted by the barbecue so for me it was kind of <laughs> like a also like a weekend getaway in Houston we like ate jerky at the gas station at Bucky's <laughs> we went to Whataburger like fast food oh, fast food breakfast oh, so good <laughs> We yeah, we went to breakfast club and had like chicken and waffles for breakfast, like 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> like, wow. that, that's when I landed and had like amazing sweet tea. I, I love sweet tea so much, even though it's so sweet. Um, what else did I do? I just ate a lot. Yeah, I ate a lot <laughs> and then spent most of the day at drum goals, meeting friends, like it's funny we had the plotter event on the second day it's kind of like a meet and greet and everyone who came was a traverse notebook user <laughs> so it became ah, like a, that's funny <laughs> the table was like kind of half taken over by a bunch of traveler's notebook which is amazing which is really funny met Teresa uh, who bumped into Teresa. who visited she works at Kino Kunia in Houston and she visited Kelly when oh. she was in oblation like when she went to Portland and she Did almost you 
wanted to meet up with us actually Phyllis but we were busy I think last oh or something like that okay but anyway. did you get to go to um uh her Kinokuniya I did I did and isn't I isn't it so good it's a great Kinokuniya and I was just like, like flipping through all the children's book around because around this time of the year it's all cherry blossom themes so I was just like flipping so through cute. all the the cherry blossom storybooks I have my Yudo Tien the the way of the bath Travers yeah, notebook that, that, one. that actually so Phyllis helped me ferry back from Taiwan <laughs> it, it's an intricate <laughs> web here I, I didn't wow. know she was in Taiwan for so long so I was like oh so my brother actually <laughs> got this thing from Osaka if you want to bring it back for me I would really appreciate it but anyway took the Yudo to that Kinokuniya and then there's this children's book called the great bathhouse so it kind of <gasps> It like illustrate it's like a children's book, a Japanese children's book that illustrated all the like the you know the auntie and the grandma like bathing together in the public bathhouse. <laughs> and I just love it because you open it, it's just like really these really like cute paintings of like naked ladies, like just all the oh, bits cute. out there. And I was I was just loving it because it's like <laughs> it's about the culture and like yeah, yeah. The, the you know, there's no need to censor or anything. It's just so innocent that whole experience of bathing with like family or close ones. And yeah, I just really love that that book was like front and center at the children's book <laughs> section. And I obviously put my Travers notebook there with the <laughs> you know charms and I submitted it to the the Travers company does this like you can submit like your photo or something oh, like that the users customized yeah exactly something. yeah so I'm hoping that that one get picked <laughs> well, like, you work there <laughs> no, I, I, I intentionally use my ulterior email and like <laughs> hoping, oh my god <laughs> hoping they wouldn't realize it was the same April <laughs> woo you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> anyway so I I had a good time at Houston it was so much fun um and that was my first trip to Texas and of course I had great barbecue as well um oh. and it was it was just amazing like I was marveling to Toasty because I've never been to Texas and my impression of Texas has always just kind of been like the wild west or like kind of dessert desert e or like hot. that's exactly what I was telling her too <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we were driving through the city and I was just like, well, this suburb looks like somewhere in Ballard, you know, it's just yeah. like, a, it looks like a Seattle, like neighborhood, like, you know, I guess it's just Houston's just like another city. <laughs> I Ex guess Texas is normal too. Ex yeah, except the highways, yep. the freeways and the highways. So why are there so many lanes? Like I, I'm, I would freak out if I were to drive in Texas. Well, it's like It's because the, like... I you guys probably or you probably experienced this like whenever you go somewhere you have to drive pretty far mm -hmm. sit on the freeway yeah. so because the you know Texas is so freaking it's big huge. so it's <laughs> it's so flat and then like you know how like in Seattle even like our I-5 is like three lane maximum like one yeah. way and so they had like 10 lanes on this like freeway oh and I was just like if I were to merge I would like be so worried because there's so many trucks like everyone's yeah. driving pickup trucks in texas probably just because like it's just you know the bigger the better and also it's just like, everything is bigger in texas Isn't and that i what was, they always say yeah it's true <laughs> so that was the only culture shock thing that i had and then we were very lucky because we went like and that weekend turned out to be just like the one of the coolest weekend they had in a while a like cold spell and i keep telling everyone i met like yeah this is like a seattle summer day like it's so nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and and everyone's just like they, they're just all kind of like kind of like mad at me because they're about <laughs> to go into like the hot and like humid and like pollen filled days which unfortunately oh. a lot of them are experiencing that right now and I'm back in mm. Seattle in my mild weather <laughs> yeah so that's like my little update and finally Kelly what have you been up to since we last record so um <laughs> I actually well first of all because you're saying what are some recent things you're journaling about um and Miley Cyrus just released her new album River <laughs> um yeah well River is one of the songs I think it's called Endless Summer Vacation um mm -hmm. the album and it's like there's something about her voice that is so like soulful and passionate and I just love her so much 
<laughs> I highly recommend just listening to the whole thing because it's it's a great one. Um, I remember listening to the song Flowers and she said oh, yeah. it's like a very LA song, like when she <laughs> pre-released it. And that was when I was in, so when I was in LA, like earlier this year, I was just like, oh, yeah. Hmm like imagine the vibe as I listen to that song but anyway <laughs> yeah yeah um and so I used my little um my my stamp from the traveler's record set mm, yeah mm-hmm. like this little you know Ooh, and you, and you printed yeah. out the album cover that's yeah. so cute I, I enjoy I journaling that. about music that way nice um but other than that I I met a new friend and I guess we can talk about this more later but um like through you know the community um um and she was like letting me play with her watercolors and I was like oh man I have like three little palettes that I just haven't really been using and so I bought a couple brushes I didn't get anything too expensive Kelly's getting into watercolor now yeah it's it's gonna happen so come to the rabbit hole oh my god wait till you get to see the like Japanese colors (laughs) like the special (laughs) yeah well you know you know who these stashes a lot of watercolor like literally phyllis, phyllis and i and sarah like we're all just oh yeah hoarding <laughs> paints left and right so 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 this was this one was only a little under 15 dollars for this travel brush mm. but it's oh, you know nice. one one of these things yeah the bullet shape one yeah reverse i love really, those. i really like it a lot but the one the one that i really want was like an italian one and it's more expensive of course but you know, it's it's kind of like I'm comparing it to starting with steel nib fountain pens, like some Kaweco Sports, some Twisbees, and working <laughs> up to a sailor. Like, the, <laughs> like I can I can cope with this. Like, I'm sure you guys recognize the the Windsor and Newton. Uh, you know, the blue. The, what is this the, called? The Cotman. The blue the, candle. Yeah. The yeah, ones you like find at Blix. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or Michael. Because I'm still a student, but you know. <laughs> It's good enough I'm, to be honest. Like I feel like I don't really feel yeah. the significance of a more expensive brush, or at least maybe I'm not at that stage of expertise yet. Okay, but they all feel the know, same though. for me. <laughs> yeah. And April will not agree with this, but I still like using the aqua brushes most. Oh really? <laughs> the, I, the ones I with the water. Re- I I use it every day too. Like just for like in my planner if I'm just coloring something. So. It's just so convenient and it reduces the barrier to try and paint but yeah Yeah. but but the actual brushes it's true you control color and water so much better than an actual and than an aqua brush Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and I I don't know I'm I'm still like playing around and and learning about it but it's it's exciting to me because I don't know it's it feels like more it, it's like playing you know I know we've mm-hmm. talked about that before yeah but, you're experimenting yeah. with it you're kind of just like dabbing color onto paper and seeing what it's like and yeah it's like ink in a way like the, the and way... I've I've thought like should I get my little pipette out and like put those into like a little palette and Ooh. like just kind of mess around <laughs> with it oh no <laughs> that's what Andy does uh your, yeah, your co-worker yeah. Andy paints with ink so um totally do i have a lot of it so (laughs) yeah (laughs) i might as well (laughs) that would be a nice um and then corolla over in canada she also does ink flowers as well like she just drops them into the little into a little well and then paints ink flowers so definitely doable that's cute (laughs) and then kelly i have to tell you this but Uh if you eventually get into gouache because sometimes watercolor is then a bridger to try other paints like gouache. Sure. You definitely have to look up the whole Holbein, Holbein, Irodori gouache because they it's like a set of twelve and it's by season. Okay, like spring, is this summer, what April fall. bought in Japan that one time? I did. Because Holbein I did. Sounds German, but it's Japanese. Yeah, Holbein's the Japanese watercolor, but she's talking about the gouache version and. 
I don't have that set, but I know what you're talking about, Phyllis. It's their seasonal one. So they have like this Japanese spring season set and just all the colors and hues inspired by the spring season, fall, winter, and then summer, yeah. obviously. So I know I know our friend Sarah, our mutual friend Sarah is like mm, I, oh, I see a set for sure. <laughs> okay. You guys, this is related to all of this. You guys know St. Louis art supply yes yeah holy mama that that site is dangerous <laughs> there's so much <laughs> good stuff plus on there. art supply yeah i know the they're oh one of the God. few that introduces the kakimori dip pen to the like the urban sketchers community like yeah really I know, uh, oblation has those just saying <laughs> i i used them a bunch on my drum goes trip and it's amazing like it's great for sketching yeah. too because you get the line variation if you want to yeah like, do some sketches or oh they have i see they have a palette for each season oh god <laughs> are you live shopping right now <laughs> yeah you know i might be <laughs> nice. but I also so I'm yes, but i knew that i had to tell kelly about it <laughs> i'm intimidated by um by the tubes i feel like that's too much for me right now don't buy any we'll we'll yeah. bring some we'll bring <laughs> we'll share a bunch with you like I, I have so many so and i will never finish using them it's so. like me with my ink. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have like a hundred tubes probably like no joke. <laughs> and I actually have four of the Iridori colors from the winter set. Cause I got it in Sketchbox. Like they had them <gasps> in one of their sketch boxes. And I was like, what? This is amazing. <laughs> nice. So you can try out the paint. Nice. Yeah. Use it in the Traverse Notebook uh, collab- art toolkit collaboration palette. Kelly. I know I've got, uh, yeah, I have. I have some things in there that I yeah. If you want to, if you want to send it up to me, or I go down sometime and I we can fill that bad boy up. Cute. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fun. (laughs) Uh. Nice. And is that all your update? You have one more. Oh yeah. So I also I just wanted to mention um, if you guys want to click on that link, uh, the Instagram account Ixoraco, I think is how you say it. so she painted her diner set that. oh my god and so I'm obsessed with it so I saw actually Leo from Stylus and Pen who is our friend in the pen community um and also he's a twitch streamer mm-hmm. um he sent his diner set to her and she painted like a like a pink and blue checkerboard. checker it's kind of like that diner like checker it, tile yeah, it'll floor. just go around the middle like the that band. it's so good it's like it's i don't so understand cute. how she gets it so like sharp and like so, so straight so i've been messaging her on instagram because <laughs> i was like hey so i see how you did that for leo and like would you be able and interested to do that with mine so so we're talking colors right what? now <laughs> um I, I, that's so, so exciting i i'm too timid or i but i would have i would love to do that like maybe not three rows just two rows maybe oh i like you know? the three rows it's so it's just so exciting and it's, it's a bold <laughs> belly band for sure yeah. <laughs> it is yeah it just makes you oh and with the car charm that would look so cute going over oh, the checkerboard so i didn't even cute. think about that oh my god Ugh. yeah okay. so I, I will keep you guys updated on that journey but I'm excited. I, I feel like this is kind of thing that Phyllis would totally do, right? right? Like, <laughs> you would do. I mean, I think you could probably just do it yourself. You just have to make sure the tape you lay down um, and the paint, you know, so put the tape down in a checkerboard pattern. Right. And then you have to wait until the paint completely dries before you lift it up. That's the hard part. Because if <laughs> yeah. you lift it up, even slightly wet you're gonna get smudging see and I don't know that I personally have that kind of patience so I I just entrust it to someone else yes you'll be standing there like it... hands over the tape like ah. <laughs> <laughs> I want no like even if it got slightly smudged or something it it I feel like it would look it, it would be part of the look you know like I don't know so exactly. I'm I'm excited about that. Well, if you send it to (laughs) her, uh, then I think it'll be in good hands. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, it looks so good. 
All right. So next section, since this is back to the hundredth episode, like, oh just yeah, let me make it special. Let's kind of do a little Q one planner review. Like, oh, I yes. know we we kind of talked about our lineups last year, the three of us. Um, and I'll I'll, I'll be happy to confess and start on my end. <laughs> I was using seven planners, like my my Tetra Kaiki set seven, and. I found myself like abandoning the two books that actually stays on my desk the whole time. So my weeks, <laughs> my cafe weeks. Yeah, what uh, the heck? And my Fourier lab. Oh no. And I have a theory. So I have a theory. All right. So, okay. Cafe weeks. The thing is that I was just journaling a lot in my other books and I'd have a busy, you know, first start to the year January and February like I was traveling around and and wait just to recap this was supposed to be your Chinese journal it was supposed to be the Chinese journal so this would have been the redundant journal you know like I might be writing about same things but in Chinese or like kind of little sentences like I did really well all the way till the end of January (laughs) (laughs) and so what I've been doing is like I was you know collaging on one side and then Chinese journaling on the other side oh wait I need I was flipping like your word choices on there (laughs) I know so I was just like kind of really having fun with collaging I think it was like January when I had more time but February you know time just like slipped away from me and I just don't have the time to update this anymore and then for the Fleur Lab, um, it's a B6, uh, one day, one page journal. This is supposed to be my emotional overfill. So this is supposed to be like my, you know, the vomit book where I, if I have any stressful days or like anything that I, it's like too ugly to put in my Hobonichi or too much to put into my Hobonichi. This was supposed to be the catch all. And you think I make a workout of it this week, but <laughs> which I'll explain yeah. later why. But I just don't go for it. And I think the reason is I don't like the cover I have on it right now. So oh, no. well, why don't you put a different cover on? That's the April? thing. I realize I need a different cover. So unfortunately, right now I have the <laughs> I I'm not gonna slam, but I currently have the superior labor scratched fabric in green and basic size, which I bought at the very beginning, um, at the end of last year, thinking this is going to be the perfect B6 size cover for me. And it came. And then I just realized I don't like the texture. Like I thought, I feel like it was something else. And I just didn't like it as much. So if anyone's in the market of a B6 green scratch leather superior labor cover, I'd be willing to resell it to you for a good price. But I think, yeah, I feel like the it's weird how it deters me. Like, I don't want to touch it. Like, I don't want to reach for it because of the texture. <laughs> yeah, that's, it that's so that not the like sign. Dry skin? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Oh, no. Like, it just feels dry and a little, like, rough, in my, in my opinion. Like, it I like... the lotion on its skin. I want, like... <laughs> I like Cavaliers because it's, like, smooth or suede, like, the yeah. like, glossiness, and this just doesn't... Like, this is the complete other spectrum, right? Because it gives mm. off that different experience. And then, in a way, each time I touch it, my emotion feels harassed. Like, I felt <laughs> roughed up, you know? And then I was just, like... <laughs> I don't feel good opening this book. So this, is, I, <laughs> this is like triggering me. This is like a like a customer review. Like <laughs> I know, like taking it so seriously. Like my I emotions know. when I touch this product just <laughs> <We're> roughed up. <laughs> Rough, no, you know that's and, valid though like it's, I know, it's not I'm, what you thought I'm, I'm not gonna go and leave like a one-star review or anything like because I know this is super personal but like I just have to admit yeah. right here I feel sure. like that's the only reason that's deterring me like you know what I might have to do I might just have to take it out of the cover because even so, the Fleury Lab cover itself is beautifully designed yeah, maybe that's I'll just what put I was gonna it, say yeah, April sure. like isn't it isn't for your lab supposed to be so gorgeous you can just keep it naked yeah maybe i'll just buy like a clear <laughs> cover or something for it you know so <laughs> yeah yeah so that's that's, that's the thing we're in early march now and that's the these two are the abandoned ones Whoa. but everything oh, April, else let's talk because i might want that cover <laughs> i know i'm like i feel like one of us is going <laughs> because you know that mm-hmm. that kind of like scratch 
there's a plotter that has that scratched kind yes. of stuff, the scratched leather I don't style. like it. <laughs> yeah, I've been eyeing it because I keep thinking it will feel like like a rough linen. I'm like, it will remind mm-hmm. me of fall, like that rough burlap yeah, texture. Yeah, I oh, feel I like that. it feels very yeah, fall. Right? It feels very Kelly fall. Kelly and I are like, ooh, we're so into yeah. <laughs> don't worry I won't I already have a b6 cover I like <laughs> I just I just can't so yeah if you want I can like offload it to you or something <laughs> like I just I just need a different option but other than that though of the other five that I'm using like I'm like daily writing my Hobonichi all caught up um Traveler's nice. Notebook already finished one insert did I tell you guys like I finished oh, one yes. insert already for January so and February um using my plotter narrow for finance tracking like me a little slow at times but I've been keeping up like I I update in it like once every two weeks um I got my you know bible size plotter for my daily scheduling I'm like the plotter a5 size is like this poor workhorse laboring like (laughs) slaving away under my sweaty hands every single day so yeah I, I I've been loving every other system and I've, I've started to feel like this is kind of it. Like I'm really honing down into the core of what I can manage in my very, very busy beginning of the year. And, and I'm really just like happy about that setup. So, you know, the weeks, I'm just going to give it a try continuously throughout the year. Like I'm not going to be, I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to stress out about empty pages in the weeks. Or just one Chinese word a day. Yeah, something like that. (laughs) I feel like if Patrick Ng were listening to this episode right now, he would be really proud of that, holding on to that feeling of like, I feel complete with my current setup. But you just have to remember, hold on to that feeling though, even in (laughs) August and September of this year. Okay. Yes, I can I cannot branch out anymore. (laughs) I know it's so much. Oh God. All right. How about Phyllis? You go next. Okay. I have a confession. I was like, you were referring <laughs> to the Petra Peggy, and I was like, I don't even remember what I said on the podcast. Literally pro- same. I don't probably, know. You probably changed like <laughs> five times in between our last recording. So I, I actually had to pull up the link. Kelly, I'll send it to you. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks. To see what we but I'm reading this and I was like, Oh, yeah, I'm not even, I didn't even know I had that player. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, Amazing. So, <laughs> um, I'll tell you what I am using, okay? The, I think re- listeners know that I always use the Traveler's Notebook for my journaling and memory keeping. So family scrapbook, personal journal, like that's still tried and true, no change there. Mm-hmm. Um. I am still using the Plotter Narrow for work-related stuff. It's nice. great. It has all my meeting notes, so I love it. Um, and the ring planner kind of went through a little little shift because according to the Tetrakagi, uh notes <laughs> that we took, I said I was using a bullet journal format with maybe an archer and olive bullet journal. And I was like, was I even bullet journaling and an archer and all I don't even remember that <laughs> was that me because I was doing that a little bit <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> and then I also like um I had purchased an anatomy co a oh, yeah. slim ring planner I remember the that cactus leather yes and I'm not using that anymore. So if anyone wants to buy that off me, just let me know. I have. I, I remember the crisis around the beginning of the year. <laughs> you <laughs> shared it with us. It wasn't fitting whatever size you were imagining it that it could fit or something like yes, that. Yes, that's right. Because it's slim. I didn't realize that. I thought mm. it was a regular A5, but it's just slightly oh. more narrow. So it can only take its own inserts. But mm. anyway, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> But I, so you know what, my favorite ring planner size is pocket size. I think everyone knows that. But I briefly was like, maybe I should use Bible size, like personal size. So I upgraded to that size. I even bought an Il Bisante used personal size. I remember that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So Il Bisante is a Italian leather company. They make like purses and wallets and all kinds of things. And in Japan, they are 
very popular for their planner, like very, very popular. And I found one, usually they're like $300, $400 for a personal size one. But I found one for way less, like a quarter of the price. And it's in really good condition. Yes, unfortunately, I think personal size is just too big. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So I'm going to have to sell that one. (laughs) I saw you de-stashing the personal size refill. So I'm like, oops, there we go. (laughs) (laughs) April's like, okay, so it starts. Hold on to the refills, maybe. Like, what if you found uh, like a plotter you like or something like that later? I mean, but I do use my plotter Bible size for sketchbook. I feel like it's perfect for me for like a sketchbook size. Yes. But I put all of my work stuff or all of my plannery stuff back into a a pocket size room. Nice. And I have to remind myself just stick with the size because you always come back to it yeah <laughs> nice and then speaking of g-stashing i'm actually g-stashing one of my planners to kelly which is i mean don't call me out like that though <laughs> you didn't have to do that <laughs> i'm just i'm getting You're it from market... to up to it. <laughs> the nothing planner do you want to explain a little bit what that is while we wait for kelly yeah. to get back online <laughs> yeah <laughs> the um nothing planner is an a5 size planner with tomoe river paper and it is um it's two days one page in a horizontal format so instead of vertical like the jibun day uh jibun days it's actually horizontal and initially i was thinking oh that is such a great uh that's such a great size that's such a great layout but I just never touched it. I never touched it. I don't even I, know how you got it in the first place. Like, how did you, when well, did you even buy it? <laughs> I, I snuck it in. What, what do we call that? Stealth shopping, right? I <laughs> stealth shop. Like, I, I remember it was hard to get too, because it was like an NTU. Like, it was, it was like Take a Note. But it was yeah. like NTU came out with it and I didn't know who would carry it. So Right. Well, I bought it directly from the Pink Oi site ah, online. Okay. Got it, got it. And instead of shipping it to the US because it's crazy expensive to send to the US, I shipped it to my grandparents' house. And so when my dad was there nice. to be with my grandparents for a little bit, he picked it up and brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> nice so that goes that goes to kelly now because it's funny because she was sharing uh last episode that she bought this poketo planner like a oh. Amer- korean american brand and it's two day like yeah it splits the day horizontally into two and then she was kind of like the downside is you know the paper doesn't carry ink well and i'm like oh. well the nothing planner <laughs> <laughs> Looks exactly like that, and it's Tomoe River paper. <laughs> Thanks for uh, putting that there because I've been just feeling so bad. It's a great planner. I think the layout is beautiful. The paper is great, but I just, like you said, I, I just not using it. You know, it just sits there, and I'm like, it needs to go to a better home. <laughs> so, my Q1 planner uh, situation right now. Uh, I know I was like so excited to start that hours planner um (laughs) and that's I forgot you had that (laughs) yeah I did too (laughs) so wait I'm trying to find it right now oh geez oops so it was in my cute Hobonichi cover um I put a lot of cute stickers in it so I was doing this with it remember this is so fun the sticker bomb I remember just like so how many weeks did I do that so I did one two three four five so almost oh I did more than I thought so I did six weeks of this crap so it was really fun into February then yeah so it's like it was just super fun sticker because I have so many stickers and I'm like oh let's color code them and blah 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 (laughs) so so now here we are in the present day and I like part of the reason why 
I'm not into uh, this planner. I feel like is like even when I touch like this part when you like touch the paper, mm -hmm. like it feels it reminds me ever so slightly of Cosmo Airlight, which is a paper I'm not fond of. <laughs> in the way that it it kind of like grips to you a little bit, like it's you know, but it it doesn't do that thing that Cosmo Airlight does that I hate, where you like have your hand resting there, and then when you write over where your hand was, uh, the yeah, Phyllis, the you green. know, oh yes, I can someone yeah. just gave me a sample of Cosmo Airlight, and I was and I noticed my little thumbprint made yeah. the ink write differently. And I was like, oh, that's- It's the gross. worst. <laughs> <laughs> no shade if you like Cosmo or Light. It's just not my thing. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah it's, it's, not, it's not like that paper, but just the way, I don't know. I feel like the ink kind of seeps in a little bit and it's, it's good with fountain pen, but like, I don't know. It's, and I'm not even really writing in here that much. Obviously it's just stickers, but- I'm just kind of like, okay, I do enough decorating in my traveler's notebook, which is still my journal too. Nice. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling a little with this and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know what to do. It's and I fine. Never it's used... fine. It's fine. We're, we literally, Phyllis and I both kind of admittedly not doing, not using some yeah. books anymore. So <laughs> yeah lesson learned for 2023 this is what I keep telling myself I'm like don't go overboard because yeah. you will in February and March you will want to sell probably one third of the planners yeah <laughs> but but the really cool thing about my situation is that yes this one is sadly not really happening right now but um I'm still very much doing the the b6 um mm -hmm. And my ugh, my A5 Stalogy that I have in another Hobonichi cover that's like, uh, that I totally customized and I'm using as like my um, finance tracker thingy. Oh, that's right. And yeah. I also put my like Himekuri stickers in there. I... Or they're not stickers, whatever yeah. they are. <laughs> Sticky um, season, thanks. Yeah, so this is going strong. My B6, like, exercise tracking slash noting down little things that happen throughout the day, but it's also kind of only sometimes. <laughs> it's the vertical <laughs> layout, I remember. Yeah, right? my yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, like, when I did yoga, I put a little yoga sticker in there. That's so I, Oh, nice. You know, I... I've actually been very consistent with this since December, which I'm very oh. proud of. Um, and I have not faltered. So yeah. we're, we're here patting our backs, even though it's like only two months and a half in like <laughs> the three of us, <laughs> we're, but we're doing it. Great job. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And of course my Hobonichi weeks, everybody knows that's, that's my, my go-to it's always with me. It has my schedule in it too. Apparently it Kelly needs <laughs> <laughs> Kelly was like asking me like when I'm flying back to Taiwan again and she needs to know in her yeah, weeks I, well, for no particular like, reason. <laughs> no, like because we're like podcast sisters and I have to keep track of where in the world you are. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I love it though. And so she can wire you money to bring stuff back. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. right. Yeah, that might be the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what else? Like what even is important in my lineup besides those and the traveler's notebook of course <laughs> okay um, i have a question for you kelly are yes. you still using that uh -oh. is it archer and olive or it's like your witchy journal do you remember yes you had like a it's like term oh. and yes i am oh um, because I mean, that was just... my inspiration i loved it well, that's yeah. right fellas you have a moon journal i remember <laughs> oh yes, you do that's a... right <laughs> my sky studies journal and it was inspired by your witchy journal oh, yeah, like yeah, a compendium yeah. of that. like knowledge and art I loved it yeah and so this this is still like kind of my I definitely don't use this every day but like it's it's always there when I need it when's the last time I'll, I'll call myself out I last wrote in here oh that is unclear because I did not date that part <laughs> It's okay. It's fine. 
at least in January. <laughs> How many pages are you in into the Leuchter? So remember, I started this in 2020. Oh, um, that's right. Okay. <laughs> and I'm on page 106, and there's what, like two? There's 250 pages. <laughs> so, so this will last me for a long time. It's and like I, your five year moon journal, witchy journal. Yeah, yeah. So I should, I should say that that's what it is. April. <laughs> it's a perpetual oh. witchy journal. Yeah. Yes. I also forgot about my my mini five plotter so so here's the thing okay first of all I'm I finally tried to uh, like because I've tried this before I'm going to try it again I brought my bible size plotter to work and it's going to be like my work list situation especially for like pen buying and pen stuff that I do at work nice so so I'm like trying to make that a thing um <laughs> Because I like just being able to get rid of it when it's over. Because with work, that's a lot of like, okay, yeah. now I don't care about it. And We're I just done. Get rid of it. Yeah. That's what I do. You know, I feel like Phyllis was the one that really got me into the whole use and recycle yeah. thing. Yeah, like yeah, with, yeah, yeah, definitely. With the ring refills. And it's so liberating because I've yeah. been using rings it's for like, two years huh. now. <laughs> and I don't have anything piled up in my bookcase anymore. Yeah. So. Um, and then so in terms of my like, okay, April is seriously so mean to me because I'm sitting here like the mini five it's just not really happening for me it's just I bought it because it was cute and now I'm like well <laughs> shit <laughs> so so here's the thing I like I'm like kind of jonesing for a plot or narrow and April keeps being like don't get one you're just gonna resell it but I'm like what if I don't though what if I fall in love with the size I don't know but <laughs> Don't I kind of think Kelly would like it. Really? She loves the weeks. It's I, like the weeks I don't know. Size. You sold your mini size. You're like looking like you don't want the mini five anymore. You're just. Yeah, but breaking, I'm keeping up with my Bible. You're breaking my plotter heart every time you resell something. <laughs> That's why Leo, Leo, you're not allowed to buy a plotter. <laughs> what? I thought he me. has one. And he like wants to sell the narrow. Oh, uh, oh he, he wants... should sell it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to message him right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I love my plotter system but I don't like to enable people to get them. Like in a way, like I want you to really want it because you'll use it, not because it's pretty. So they're coming from April representing Far USA, telling you to make <laughs> responsible decisions when buying stationery, <laughs> but only when you know, <laughs> Stop responsibly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's like honestly pretty, Im <laughs> that's pretty impressive coming from April. Like, <laughs> shall we say because i feel like it breaks my heart a little bit every time i see someone trying to sell their plotter <laughs> so i just oh don't, really i just don't like that part where people buy a bunch and then like say and then tell me they don't know what to do with it and i'm just like that's so sad because they're so <laughs> nice like i i have feelings i have attachments to all the plotters that, that were made they're like your little children that's they how are. i feel about hobonichi's various work. little <laughs> children's around the world so i just want them but all to be know, put to good use <laughs> they're going to better homes you know I that's right yeah. as long as it gets used i guess that's even yeah better. yeah and because so people like me i initially started off with the shrink mm -hmm. and then after a while i saved up and i was able to get a pueblo leather oh one. that's true you did so so then i was able to sell my shrink at a good price for somebody else who can then have a plot or no I have no out. problem with you Phyllis you, <laughs> you make really good use of stuff <laughs> only because you're friends that's to be nice to me <laughs> it's such she's like that poor plotter <laughs> but um, I think he would love the leaks but I think he would love the, that's that. true the narrow or, size or, does sorry, the look, narrow yeah the narrow. the narrow size do look like the weak so that is kind of how yeah, Kelly, you might have a particular affinity to that. And it fits dimension. in your hand. It's like long, but long like a Bible, <laughs> but you can hold it in one hand. Which is kind of cool, you know? And I think it's because April and like Brad Dowdy from Pen Addict is keeps talking about it in his episodes. I'm like, oh, I want to be like them. 
<laughs> See, that's the thing. Don't try that's, to buy. Don't use that mentality. <laughs> that mentality is not a good one. Don't buy something because you want to be like someone else. Buy it for yourself, okay? <laughs> I do like that. I do like that. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta be responsible sometimes, and that's that's <laughs> that's the stance I will hold to to. Because I feel like that's the toxic part about like Instagram. It's like you think if you buy a pen, your ha- your penman should be as good as the person that uses oh, it, yeah. or like if like I feel like that's in like the bullet journaling or like the other kind of like artsy style a lot. Is like you think you're buying it because you want to be like that lifestyle. Oh yeah. yeah, I love telling myself that. I'm like, yeah, I need it so I can be a better artist. <laughs> as if owning a better paint will make me a better artist no, I, that's how it works and I'm not like judging anyone because I definitely have those moments so many times like I see Taiwanese artists buy that super cute ceramic like pen holder and I'm like oh I could feel that nice Zaka vibe if I like <laughs> own the same thing I bought a cute ceramic spoon and I never use it so um <laughs> Just want to say, like, yeah, that's that's a mentality that we should all try to like strive away from. Yeah, yeah. To to be conscious and intentional to the best that we can. <laughs> and the truth Station of the matter Cafe is, PSA. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, what what even would I use it for? You know, because yeah. I, uh. Do you want to borrow my narrow for like a, a month and just give it a test run and see if you like that size? But don't you use it or do you have another one? I have a backup one. <laughs> I've got a backup. <laughs> I got a of backup one. Secret project. Yeah. So oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I would like to try it. Okay. Yeah. Next time oh. we'll do a switcher. Um nice. So that's your little Q1 planner update. That's then? my little update, I think um yep and I think I to kind of um kind of towards the end of the episode I want to really take this time to acknowledge you know things that we want to express our gratitude towards or feel appreciative with you know the podcast having coming this long um it's technically 187 or 82 episodes <laughs> episode 100 right here um what are some things that you feel like you want to give a shout out to in the station community and I want to kind of take this time for us to be able to do that so who wants to start I mean I always feel like I'm blown away by how like supportive everyone is everyone's very kind and Like I said earlier in this episode, in the beginning, there is like this connectedness. Like, it's so, like, like April, you had somebody, a friend of yours on the East Coast who said she knew me because we went to Mandarin class, like Chinese school together when we were little. You know, stuff happened. And like how Kelly met us we were at the same bookstore at the same time and like like I don't know it's just it's all about bookstores <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing how those things work out you know and um yeah and I also always remember like when Teddy was first born and mm-hmm. I was so stressed out as a new parent so many people from the station are coming to me like people that I don't know very well are reaching out to me and listening to me like complain about this or that and giving me tips but I was like mm-hmm. that's like a little parenting support group in my stationary group <laughs> in that stationary Venn diagram yes. you know like you guys share you have you can relate on this level and I think to yeah. your point like station cafe really like even though we started before the pandemic we really grew during the pandemic if you will mm-hmm, like yeah. more people listen to stuff like this because they're at home or they're seeking other the other people we whether it's us who's talking or other listeners who's listening at the same time and then be able to like talk about the same thing or like react to our Instagram stories or or make comments or share their Instagram stories and then like with their little comments and that like that I think that's what really made it really nice like we're, we're like weaving this complicated web that just gets tighter and tighter and people start meeting. Like I'm, I'm hoping people who listen to the podcast 
find friends in your local community and feel that it was okay to to be able to start such a community because of us like how we are in like the pacific northwest we meet up sometimes and then like i hope that encourages people to be able to meet your local friends yeah totally um okay i'll go in a second um i i really want to give a shout out you know to all the beautiful and amazing guests i've had on the podcast like <laughs> in the early stages when i do interviews <laughs> i know i've been so lazy and not doing those at all even though i really wanted to shout out to mama loves paper i've been meeting to talk to you but you had your baby you moved to the u.s now you're moving back to japan i just don't know what's a good time <laughs> <laughs> anyway um amazing guests that became really good friends and then amazing guests who like blossomed during this two and a half year when I got to know them better so example one my from paper treat just an amazing person really cares about the stationery like really relates to the culture of stationery probably because of her own culture as well and just really seeing her and her store grow and Mm -hmm. her original shop paper tree was just like really for kids and like for correspondence but now it's like really feeling this our community (laughs) and like getting all these amazing Japanese illustration stuff so I just I just feel like it was such a honor to be able to be like be friends with someone as amazing as her and then another special person I want to shout out I know Kyla probably I don't know if she listens to us as actively because she's such a busy person but Kyla from Rainbow Holic did you guys see she opened the yeah ja- the kitsa the rainbow stationery cafe in it japan is so cute it i so i i cried like the moment Aww. i saw her put up that instagram story because i saw on the stories first i think it was a yeah. reels and i was like wait what and then i went and watched a youtube video and i was just like <gasps> like at the because at the beginning of the stationary cafe kelly i remember telling i was her patron and like i subscribed yeah. to her patreon of her rainbow hall of goods like from japan every month and like even till now i'm still in her like beginner tier where i could like watch her share her japanese adventure like i live vicariously through her and like yeah. to see her just go through this growth from content creator on patreon to having a booth and bungu joshi like me going to loft last year and being able to see her stuff at loft and then now she's literally like serving melon soda at the stationery cafe living the dream and knowing i i mean there's definitely a lot of hardship behind that but like Totally. She, she kind of made it you know like so that was just I was just like how amazing to, for me to live in this era where I could just see people yeah. do the things they want and like in the stationary industry and just like be this just feels very wholesome like I still can't believe that I get to witness the the transformation of such adventures really and I I can't wait for people uh, who listens to the podcast or anyone who's visiting Japan to go and see her in person and be able to buy her stuff, support the artists that she supports. And I definitely want to hit up the Rainbow Holly Cafe. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> bad. It looks so, so, so cute and well put together. So that was, that was the two special shout outs I wanted to give out. And finally, Kelly, you... Yeah, so I briefly mentioned this earlier, but I didn't say names. So Rebecca, um, who is an amazing customer at Oblation and also a friend, um, and April met her like during our uh, art toolkit. What was travel, that called? Travel, travel and, sketch? and sketch event last summer. Yeah. Um, so she's been into TNs and Tobinichis, and she's also a calligrapher. She's very talented um so she started these events so I think there's been two so far the third one is happening soon I actually won't be able to go um but I went to the first two and they're called food and dude which is (laughs) d-o-o-d and my buddies were like we thought it was food and dude like d-u-d-e I'm like no no dude is in doodle like so you you order the food and then you get to dude <laughs> you dude the food um, you dude the food. 
so I don't know she knows all these really talented artists and cool people and so I've gone I went to the first two and um like she's holding them at different little restaurants it's it's usually kind of like places that have outdoor seating uh and right now it's pretty cold so like you know some of them have like the heaters outside but um nice it's been really cool just getting to like hang out and you just show up and meet people and eat good food and like draw and (laughs) or journal or whatever uh and so through that I actually went to like like one of the ladies there invited me to her house for like another kind of drawing thing nice and like it's it's one of those things where you meet people and then they invite you into their home and you get to like connect with them even more and draw more and it's it's just kind of this this amazing community of very generous people and like we all just want to share our brains and something about especially watercoloring or any type of creative thing like this that we do that's like when you're so focused on what you're doing or what you're drawing that you just kind of lose track of the world around you and you're just yes. in it and like I, I know that's what we all live for <laughs> like is finding something that makes you feel that way um and the flow being in yeah flow. yeah it's reminding it's, me of the spin-off meetups I used to host um, with Sarah, literally just the two of us. And whoever wants to join <laughs> us, we call it like the painting parties. Like we oh, do the cute. stationary meetups, but then also we want to paint at cafe. So it's kind of like yeah. the, 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 the adjacent things to the stationary hobby that ends up mm-hmm. becoming like a second hobby or, yeah. you know, that's to be honest, we all got into stationary for the art right like for the creativeness the arts um the way you can make art with the tools and you know watercolor could be an extension of that and I I like to call that stationary too you know (laughs) sometimes for sure (laughs) and but not when you're counting it towards your stationary budget no yeah no it's a different (laughs) we're very we're all very agreeing on that like very quickly it's art supplies (laughs) it's art supplies (laughs) it's a different world yes <laughs> oh so good so yeah I know it's it's like 180 something episode 100 episode for us and I hope I hope we can continue to do this for as long as we can you know like we may we may not offer knowledge or advice or, or facts or facts <laughs> we're mostly just hype and like gossip and <laughs> and gushing but we love stationary we love stationary <laughs> I love that's that. the important part and I think a lot of this is really like just to come back to the beginning like we did this out of friendship like Phyllis and I just once talked about stationary when we're like bored like I was in I think I was having like a job crisis back then and then you were about to have your baby and we were just like let's just do it every every, do it every Sunday morning and then you know Kelly when we started the happy hour it was just because like you know interviewing guests is fun but we whenever we meet up we just talk about stationery so why not put it on the podcast so yeah (laughs) I think it really just like kind of like spins off from there and even though today at this volume of episodes I feel a degree of responsibility to push things out consistently but I just feel like at the end of the day I need to remind myself this is completely for fun and I hope you all just like take it easy along with us sure yeah (laughs) don't don't take us too seriously (laughs) (laughs) yeah please never take me seriously (laughs) unless I'm talking about a new sailor (laughs) or me about a new uni ball (laughs) one So finally, let's let's kind of quickly share something we're excited to uh, to look forward to before we end this episode. Um, Phyllis, what about you? Mine is just the changing of the seasons, going from winter to spring. Excited for all the the current pink things that are going to yes. come out soon, and then um and then hydrangea stuff in the summer. Oh, yeah, so good. <laughs> And then changing my watercolor palette from fall winter colors to spring summer colors. Oh, very exciting. 
I love that. That's cute. That's a good <laughs> idea. My I never change my palettes. It's just like the same ones. I just use different <laughs> colors from it. <laughs> well, because this palette, my art toolkit, I specifically have been using it, or I specifically to pick the colors for landscape and outdoor paintings. Mm. But I feel like that's what I like the most. I don't really enjoy still life very much. And so it is very seasonal. I need to have colors that reflect what I'm seeing in the world around me. Matches the actual view. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. Nice. I like How that. How about you? Um, Kelly, you go next. Oh, I'm like, who you? <laughs> <laughs> not, not you, woo. You, me. You. <laughs> Spider-Man so. pointing at each other. Um. <laughs> I love that. So, um, April was mentioning the new sailor pen. Oh, she's actually not talking about the one that I think she's okay, anyway. Um, I'm talking about the Yuzu Yu again, that pen that we talked about and happy hour last, about time. last episode. I, I can't help but be excited about that. Um, but also CY's Esterbrook Techo Nib launch, which is very exciting. Um, we actually got the pens at Oblation already that they're on but we're not allowed to say what they are because it's a secret until it gets announced oh um, wait so it already has those grinds on it already yeah so <gasps> the thing is like we know that his nib is coming so that's not a spoiler or anything uh or like you know being me being a bad retailer by telling you that they're here but like i can't tell you the pen but i can tell you it's beautiful no no <laughs> okay let's talk after this episode <laughs> i need to know which sd <laughs> yeah, com coming soon to a shop near you and the, his nib is really cool too so yeah I'm, I'm just proud of him for you know collabing with esterbrook because that's kind of a big deal <laughs> mm -hmm. another cool thing that we get to witness in the stationary life. yeah yep <laughs> um for me i'm looking for also to the cherry blossoms, like I said last week or two weeks ago, uh, especially the Hanami portion, like, yes. you know, when the neighborhood starts blooming, uh, I'm really going to try to do as much, as much picnicking as I could. Oh, I have yeah. some, I have some cool big picnic blankets ready this year. I'm going to sit and, you know, have, you know, coffee in my thermos and paint, like you said, enjoy the moment, oh. paint some pink petals yeah. and so that's probably going to happen like towards the last two weeks of March which is when they typically start blooming um, and then I, I think Phyllis kind of didn't say it but she has a bunch of haul from Taiwan that she needs to get into I have yes. a bunch of hauls I need to get into myself like I, I shopped excessively towards the end of last month just because of stress so I got some cute things from Japan I got some nice. little happy things like they're just all in their boxes and I haven't even opened them yet and I'm good at waiting though so <laughs> I, I open things and I need a little pick me up <laughs> yeah I'm not as we all know that's not me what's waiting I don't know what that is <laughs> <laughs> so and then the sailor pen that i was going to mention is the you oh, yeah. you i'm so excited it is oh I'm so okay excited to buy that pen. my first pen of the year unless that sd <laughs> is a good one that maybe i, I might it is that. good but i feel like nothing can beat the user you yeah like no <laughs> nothing we have i need to take a photo with my my yudo insert with my little you know charms and stuff yeah oh so cute I'm i love so it excited <laughs> um so yeah that pretty much wraps up this episode and just a little ending disclaimer again like I know we kind of gushed about doing the podcast and keeping it strong but I happen to potentially have some little turbulence in my personal life for the next two weeks so I was gonna ask Kelly if it's okay next episode may or may not be delayed sure of course so, yeah i mean life happens and uh yeah we, we just gotta roll with the punches <laughs> the punches keep coming <laughs> so the, the years start coming and they don't stop coming as, as smash mouth said i probably said that on the podcast before <laughs> so you might see me on a plane again i unfortunately have some family things that i need to be with my family for and so i will probably be traveling back to taiwan and 
maybe like villas it could start off with some hospitality things and then stationary shops as a <laughs> as a pick me up afterwards so i a i got to balance I may have some new new items to talk about, but also really appreciate just everyone, listeners, bearing with me. Like, I, I know I don't have to share this, but I just also feel like, eesh, we're kind of semi-public. Like, people, yeah. will, people will be curious, like, where are we? Where, yeah, like, what, what's going what, on? What's yeah, going and on? I, so, I yeah. think people understand that, that we are also people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally. We, we don't not... sleep in the podcast studio <laughs> we, we don't we don't we record in our pajamas <laughs> not, not like how teachers sleep at school we all know that <laughs> anyway and uh, thanks everyone as always for listening to us chat and we look forward to kind of coming back in april maybe with another fun episodes and once again this is april from penguins creative Phyllis from Miss Ling Bloom. And Kelly from Kelly Love Letters. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.